Okay, so we are going to continue our process of drum sample replacing and doubling some of the key drums in our drum kit. In this video, I mainly wanna focus on the snare drum. Now, the reason why I started with the kick drum in the previous video is that kick sample replacement is much simpler than snare sample replacement. With snare drum, we have to think about all the different playing styles of the snare drum. You can have ghost notes, you can have single strokes, you can have rim shots, you can have rim taps called side stick where you just tap the rim of the drum, flams, you can have stick shots. So there's all different types of snare playing styles. So one of the first things I recommend you do is go through your song and just listen to the drums isolated and pick out all of the different playing techniques in the snare. Now, for this track, I'll just tell you straight up, it's single strokes. There's a couple of softer single strokes here and there, and then there's flams. There's no side stick or anything else like that. Now, rim shots are when you do a single stroke, but you also hit the rim, which we're gonna reserve those just for the loudest uh, dynamic uh, throughout the track. So let's just give the, uh, the intro here a listen, and I've got the snare top track soloed. Typically, when I do drum replacement, I use the snare top track. Occasionally, I'll use the bottom track if there's like an isolation issue. But that's another thing we have to worry about with snare is isolation. You're going to get some of the cymbals. You're going to get some of the toms and some of the kick drum in your snare track. So we're going to have to be aware of all of that. So pretty much all single strokes here. There's some fast notes, but again, all just single strokes. Once we get over here we start seeing some flams. Now a flam is when you play two notes at the same time, but slightly offset. And you can see with some of the flams, it's really obvious that it's two notes. Others, you know, they kind of creep a little bit closer together. They're a little hard, here we go, a little harder to see. And so we are actually going to use flam snare samples on those sections. And really it's just the first verse that does this. The rest of the song is all just single strokes. And again, a few faster notes that maybe we need to lower the velocity on here and there. So first let's choose our sample. One thing I didn't mention in the previous video is it's kind of important to find a snare sample that kind of sort of matches the tone of the drum that you're, you've are you already recorded. But at the same time, it doesn't have to match up perfectly because sometimes layering two snare sounds together will get you a thicker, bigger sounding snare. So this is a pretty high sounding snare. I guess it's not really a high tuned. It's sort of a medium tuning snare. Um, I'm going to layer this with like a thicker a uh, lower tuned snare drum just to give it some body and, and some depth. So once again, if you purchase this mixing course, this will come with a drum sample library with several kick snares and toms. We have three different sizes of snares here. We have a 14 by five, a 14 by six and a half, and a 14 by seven. I'm gonna go with the 14 by seven. Again, these are all DW collector series snares, and we have three different tunings for this one. I'm gonna go with the low tuning. And you can see the top 15 are all just rim shots. These are really, really hard hits. Now I wanna reserve my rim shots for just the uppermost velocities. And there's not a lot of really soft velocities. There's no ghost notes in this track. So that's not really gonna be an issue for us. If you had ghost notes, you may wanna go down the list and also program in some of these softer uh, dynamics as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab like the top five rim shots and then maybe like the first 15 or so regular hits. So with that in mind, let's run the drum replacement doubling tool in Logic. Just select that track. Again, you press control D. That brings up the drum replacement doubling tool. Let's switch this over to snare. We'll do doubling and then we'll set our trigger note to D1 which is the default GM uh, MIDI note for snare. And then let's make sure that we're getting one MIDI note for each snare drum. Now you gotta be really careful with snare because if you set your uh, threshold too low, you're gonna be picking up all these kick hits in the background. We don't want that. But we also don't wanna miss any of our snares. So try to find a middle ground that picks up all of the notes 
but doesn't add in any extra notes and also doesn't miss any of these faster notes. So we're all good there, all good there. There's one like drum fill over here too I want to take a look at to make sure we're getting all of those notes. Yeah, so we're getting all of those notes. One of the things that's going to be kind of unavoidable here with flams is some of these flams you're just going to get one note on, but others, if you look real close here, there's actually two notes here. Um, so we're just going to live with that. We're going to have to go through those flams and kind of clean them up, delete certain notes. Which we're actually going to load in some flam samples and create a different group for those, but we'll get to that in just a bit. So let's click OK. So like I said in part five, I don't want to use Logic's stock sample library because I'm going to build my own snare sample replacer instrument. However, if you're not interested in all of this more advanced sample programming stuff, I totally get it. You can go ahead and use the stock library if you want, or you can load up drum kit designer and use that or load up your favorite third party drum instrument if you like. Again, this is the magic of MIDI based drum replacement. You can use any instrument you want. So what I'm gonna do on that track is remove sampler, and then we're just gonna load in sampler again in stereo, go to the synth section of sampler, go to details. Let's pull up the polyphony. We're going to do some randomization just like we did before, just like so. And then in the modulation matrix, turn off all of our modulation modulators. Don't need to mess with that. And we can just show the mapping. Then we're gonna go to our groups. We're gonna create two groups. One of these is going to be single strokes, and then the other one is going to be flams. And there we go. Okay, so let's go to single strokes, go to zone view, and let's take all of those samples that we selected and drag them right in there, just like so. And once again, we have 21 samples. So let's do this on the fives again, just to kind of make it easy. Um, so I'll do 125 to 127, 120, 115, 110, 105, and so forth and so on. Okay, so my lowest velocity, the second lowest layer is 30. So this one's just gonna start at zero. And then we have to set our high range for each sample. So we'll go 124. And again, remember, we're just trying to make this number one lower than this number. So 119, 114, 109, 104. We don't want any overlapping velocity layers. 94, 89 and so forth and so on. 34, and then the last one here will be 29. So that first sample, that lowest velocity will be zero to 29. Once again, I'll select all. We will turn on one shot, turn off pitch. Let's double check these in the uh, piano view here, the keyboard view. No overlapping samples, so we're good there. And then I'm going to change the key range for all of these to D1 up to D1. So just type in D1, hit return. If any of them uh, don't go where they need to go, just go back and adjust those manually. And then we can do the key as well. We can set these all to D1, but it's not really going to matter since we turned off pitch. So now we have all of those samples lined up on D1, but what's going on right here? Let's check that one out. Oh, I see. We just need to change that to D1. There we go. Okay, so those are all the single strokes. Let's load in some flams. Now, none of the flams in this track are soft. They're all loud. So let's go and find some flam samples. They're all labeled right here. They all say flam one, two, three, four, and so forth and so on. And I think like the first eight or nine of them are kind of like a louder dynamic. Yeah, so we get to nine and we get a soft dynamic. So let's just take these in, these first eight in, drag those in, just like so. We can do these on the fives as well, 125, 120, 115. It's not really going to matter that we don't get all the way down to the lower ranges here because all of the flams that are played in this song are played at a higher dynamic. So we really don't need any lower dynamic flams. So this bottom one can go all the way down to zero. And then once again, we try to make the high range be one lower than this value. So 124, 119, 114, 109, 104, 99, and 94. Okay, let's go ahead and turn off pitch, turn on one shot. Let's set these to D sharp one. So D pound sign one, over here D pound sign one. The reason why 
sometimes it, it won't uh, set them all to the right key range the first time is if the high note is lower than the note you're trying to type in. So sometimes you have to type them in a couple of times to get it right. And it, this sure as heck beats going into the keyboard editor and, you know, manually dragging these around. Um, so you can just kind of batch process them all at the same time. So now we've got, uh, and if I go ahead and select both of these, you'll see both groups. We've got our standard uh, single strokes. And see that randomization that's there? That's going to randomize all those samples. And again, it's also going to be velocity sensitive. So if I play a louder note, it's going to randomize the louder notes. Same thing for the flams. I think my input velocity when I just click on the key is uh, kind of low, which is why it's only doing the bottom two samples. But there is going to be randomization applied to this as well. Okay, so let's save this instrument just like we did with the kick drum. Go to save as. I'm going to find that folder, drum samples, and I'll call this snare DW collector series. This is a 14 by 7, and I'll say low for low tuning. And once again, I forgot to save the audio data. Let's replace that. And now we can pull that instrument up anytime we want. So let's see what this sounds like now. Okay, so we're going to have to do some work here with the flams, but let's select all of these. Let's go to MIDI transform. Let's go to exponential velocity, and let's just make these a little more exponential or actually logarithmic. So let's do like negative three for these. And eh, maybe that's a little too strong. Let's maybe do negative two. I still want to have some mid-range velocities in there just for variation. You know, so most of the notes are kind of like, like at a higher velocity. But again, if you want to pull some of these up even more, you can manually adjust them, especially these faster notes. I like to kind of pull those velocities down a little bit so we're not getting rim shots for those. Okay, so we're in the flam section here. It's just the first verse. Some of these you can see that it has put two single strokes. It's done a really good job of putting two single strokes where they need to go. The problem is that most of these aren't going to work out this way. So any of these ones that are the flams are showing up as single strokes, I'm going to get rid of those. The second note of each one. Let's go through. There's another one. Yeah, here's a couple of them right here. And here's one more. So then what we have to do is go through and determine which of these are actually flams. These two notes are standard single strokes. The rest of these are flams. So I'm going to hold option and press up. And that's going to put them up on D sharp one. Remember, we put an entire different group of flams on D sharp one. So we can have one track playing two different playing styles. Another way to do this is you could really get in there and you could manually add in single strokes and manually line up each MIDI note with each of the flams. That may get you something that's a little more accurate because some of these flams were, are definitely not going to be lined up with uh, the snare drum part perfectly. But, you know, for me, it's just like if it sounds good, it sounds good. You know, if it makes it sound better, it makes it sound better. I don't really worry about the second note in each flam being slightly off. Um, so you can make that determination for yourself. 
Okay, so off screen, I'm gonna take a moment and go through the rest of my snare replacer track and delete any erroneous notes and manually adjust velocities where needed. Okay, so I've gone through the entire snare replacer track and compared it with the snare top track. I've made sure to remove any erroneous notes. I've played around with the velocities in a way that I like. So now what I can do is I can convert this over to audio if I like. So I'll select that track, hit Control B to bounce in place. I'll call this Snare Plus, put this on a new track, mute the original bypass effects, and don't include volume, don't normalize. And then I'll just hide the Snare Replacer software instrument track. Okay, so now let's compare this with and without the kick and snare replacer tracks. I've just got them put together so I can easily mute and unmute them. They're helping to give these drums a little more pop, a little more punch. And that's important for rock because we want the kick and snare drum to cut through the rest of the mix. And once we bring in the guitars, it's going to be very difficult for the original kick and snare mics to cut through the mix. Okay, so that's kick and snare replacement. In the next video, we're going to move on to doing some fine tuning of the toms, doing some edits on the toms, and also doing some drum sample replacement on the toms. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.